Mr. I call the Honourable Minister Tony Ryle. Mr. Speaker, uh, very proud to be part of a government that focuses on the things that matter to New Zealanders. Though I do think it's somewhat ironic to have Mrs. Maroney claim that she is when she's the party that wants to ban Facebook. That's right. So this, I don't know anyone saw the train wreck of an interview on television last night with the once up and coming member for Dunedin North, Dave Clark, where he just was wound in and ended up committing to Labour. And actually it was their policy. He said he'd been talking about it for some months to allow Labour to ban Facebook. Honestly, is that what Labour is about? They're on every media site, every TV channel, banning Facebook. That's not concentrating on the things that matter. That's not concentrating on the things that matter. That's actually just being stark bonkers to make those sorts of things. So anyway, what we're doing on this side of the House is we're really focusing on the issues that matter about growing a fast-growing economy for the betterment of New Zealand families. And it stands in really stark contrast uh, to what we've seen from the party opposite, which is really just back to where they've always used to be, which is tax and spend, wasteful spending, uh, bureaucracy, spending money that they don't have. It's what they've always done and it's what they're always going to do. But on this side of the House, because of our very prudent and careful financial management of the New Zealand economy, we're on track to get the country back into the black. We're on track to be able to keep New Zealand moving forward. And while countries all around the world are struggling with debt and deficit, you know, the United Kingdom, France, Italy, Spain, Greece, even Germany, public debt at levels of like 100% of GDP in some of these countries, we're peaking at around 27%. So we've got this plan, we've been sticking to it. It's about controlling spending, it's about taking the sharp edges off the recession in order to benefit the most vulnerable families in New Zealand and protect our social services, and that's what we've done. And it's a program that really works for New Zealand. We're focused on our key priorities, and I think the Prime Minister's statement, of which we're debating this afternoon, continued to build the country's prosperity on those four platforms, about managing responsibly New Zealand's finances, just like people would expect us to do. Secondly, we're building a more competitive and productive economy because in the end it's creating jobs, incentives, reward for effort are what makes a strong growing economy. Right. Thirdly, we've been delivering better social services, better public services for New Zealanders within very tight budgets because that's what the public expects of a national government. Careful spending and a focus on results and services for New Zealanders. And fourthly, surely one of the greatest responsibilities of our government, and that is leading the rebuild of one of our great cities, Christchurch, because on the very first day of the earthquakes, that is the commitment that our Prime Minister gave, that we would stand with that city, and we are, and we're investing strongly in the support that we're doing uh, that we're offering and working with them on. So look, our economy is growing, more jobs are being created, family incomes are rising, crime is down. We know that more elective surgery is being provided for New Zealanders, more preventive health care is out there, long-term welfare dependency is falling, and we're continuing to help New Zealand families with a very generous income support system. So our government is focused on the business that New Zealanders have sent us here to do, and that is to get New Zealand through the recession, get our country going forward, get our country in the black, and make sure that we have a strong growing economy for New Zealanders. But month after month, we see the opposition parties uh, attacking what our government is doing and policies that uh, Labour and the Greens in opposition continue to push on New Zealanders. Stuff that will not make jobs and stuff that will not benefit to families getting ahead, like a capital gains tax that will punish people who work hard to grow their businesses. So you're out there and you've got a small takeaway, you're out there, you've got a small bookshop, you've got a small dairy, you've got a small kiwi fruit orchard, and you work hard, you increase its value, you grow the wealth, 
bang, they'll take a big dollop of that when you come to sell your business. They want a big gap between the company tax and the personal tax rates. They want a more punitive ETS. So they stand up every day and worry the country about electricity price rises, which are half what they were under Labor, but they won't say what they will do, what impact their punitive ETS will have on that. It will push up their power prices way beyond what they ever saw before. They want to nationalise the power industries. Look, no country in the world that has moved to anything that Labor Greens is proposing has reduced power prices. So they say, oh, this is the sort of system that they run in Ontario. If only they knew the power price rises that the people of Ontario are facing. They are significant. And they've got this half-baked plan to become the country's biggest property developer. Uh, they're against the convention centre and all the jobs that they're going to have there. And now we're going to become the insurer of choice for New Zealanders, the 97th insurer in New Zealand. So really, Labor Greens aren't focused on what really matters. Their record is rejecting everything that this government has done to speed up and support the economy. They're against every Resource Management Act change that makes it easier for jobs to be created. They're against everything that may, means more houses will be built. They're against everything that means more jobs, unless, of course, it's government jobs. And they're all in favour of government jobs, but not private sector jobs. They're against the International Convention Centre. They hate the investment in The Hobbit, and they hate what we've done with Avatar as well. So they're against all of that. They're against uh, uh, other international investment from overseas. They're against what we're trying to do with aquaculture in the Marlborough Sounds. They're against what Bathurst is trying to do to create jobs on the West Coast. They're against the increase in jobs, wealth and opportunity that irrigation and smart water use can provide for New Zealand. So time and time again, we see the opposition parties, when push comes to shove, they can't support anything that will actually create jobs and opportunities for New Zealanders. But we see that as the major job of our government, to continue supporting the wealth creators, the families, the small businesses, the individuals who are trying to keep New Zealand and moving ahead. And that's the reason why uh, we continue, for example, the reduction in ACC levies, hundreds of millions of dollars being returned to New Zealand businesses. Um, the business growth agenda with all the initiatives there, research and development, the ultra-fast broadband investment. These are all the things that build a nation and build an economy, and that is what we are doing, because that is how we pay for important health, education and social services in New Zealand. Right. It's not by doing some tricky things about saying uh, in the last election we were promising one and a half billion dollars worth of stuff we couldn't afford and now we're pulling back on that and we're just going to spend another 500 million dollars. That's not actually responsible finances. But we need to have a strong growing economy. It is what creates jobs but it is also what funds the better public services that New Zealanders want. It, what's going to fund what's already budgeted these excellent education announcements that have been made by John Key and Hikia Parata. Excellent. For years we've talked about incentivising and rewarding the best teachers and the best principals, and the people who have opposed it the most are the teacher unions and their handmaidens in the opposition. They've always opposed anything that would reward and incentivise the best teachers in New Zealand. And it's coming, as Simon Bridges says, because this government is delivering it. This government's also delivering better health services for New Zealand. 1,300 extra doctors in our public hospitals, 3,000 extra nurses and 1,000 fewer managers and administrators. We have put the resources on the front line and, by golly, are they delivering? 40,000 extra elective surgeries this last 12 months compared to when we came to office. It's a really significant investment in elective surgery. More of our kids being immunised than ever before. More of our uh, New Zealanders being discouraged from smoking. A fantastic investment. The huge turning point that our government has created in the fight against tobacco. This is a government that's focused on what matters, that's a strong growing economy, and we are making a difference to New Zealand families. Mr. Speaker.
I call the honorable.